One year ago I ran a 100km mountain ultra marathon that took me 21 hours to finish. Looking back on this adventure I made some big mistakes, both in my preparations and during the race. In this video I will go through the biggest learning points from my first extreme ultra marathon and by the end of the video I will talk about if I ever will put myself through a race like this again. The most important training principle is that you get good at what you train at. And I have been an advocate for this for long. And I think people way too often don't train specific enough towards their goals. But still, I didn't manage to do this in a good way myself before running my first ultra marathon. If you want to get good at running for long distances in steep and technical terrain like we have here, that is what you need to do a lot of. Of course, other elements can be important like uh, strength training and adding some uh, speed work. But your training plan should be built around those long runs where you put your body through on a similar load to what you will be racing at as uh, possible. So why didn't I start doing that early on in my preparations? The problem was that three months before my ultra I had another goal to run a sub 9 minute 3000 meter on the track. And of course the training you do for that differs a lot from the ultra marathon training. So I focused on running a lot on flat fast surfaces and did a lot of intervals and too few of those ultra specific uh, long runs. I don't really regret this since I managed to achieve my goal uh, on the 3000 meter and finish the ultra. But I think I could have done it way better on the ultra if I had shifted my focus in my training a bit uh, earlier. And if I'm ever running an ultra again, I'm going to start with those uh, two to five hour long runs in relevant terrain a lot uh, earlier. This is me starting the 100k race and as you can see, I'm going out in front. And starting out in that pace was just such a stupid thing to do. And another one of those things that I knew I shouldn't do, but still managed to do. I quickly lost the lead, but still kept pushing in a way too hard effort the first part of the race. And this is like the most basic uh, ultra running advice that you will find everywhere. Start out way slower than you want to do. So why didn't I manage to do this and what was the result of my high starting pace? Most of my racing has been pretty short and intense races. The longest I had ever raced before this race was a 5 hour race. And I knew that this ultra race was going to take me around 20 hours. So to know what pace and intensity I should start a race in was really difficult. I had said to myself to start out easy, but I hadn't made it clear enough for myself how easy I should start a race. So with my intense start of the race, I was pretty dead in my legs after five hours and had to turn down the pace a lot uh, from that uh, point on. Starting out easy enough was especially hard since I'm a pretty competitive person and of course was triggered by all the people around me. So for the beginning part of the race I was in third position but I had to drop down to seventh uh, position by the end of uh, the race. If I would have started out the race in a bit easier pace I think I would finish in a faster time and in a better position. And if I ever will run a similar race again I think I will have to set like a heart rate limit that I keep checking on my watch to never pass uh, that in the beginning part of uh, the race but now I'm luckily just out on a short trail run here so I can allow myself to push a bit. I think many runners tend to focus a bit too much on gear, thinking way more of what's the best and newest running shoe to buy than uh, how you should structure your training or just finding a nice trail to go running at. I mean, running is in so many ways the world's simplest sport. And although it can be fun and beneficial with good gear, 
you really don't need a lot of gear to enjoy it. But this more minimalistic approach to running gear didn't work out <laughs> that good for me when it came to running a pretty extreme ultra marathon. Because small problems with your gear might become big problems over 20 hours of non-stop use. For example, if your shoes don't fit optimally, that can cause some serious blisters and pain after running for that long. So if I'm doing another extreme ultra race, I will for sure spend more time and a bit more money testing out shoes, running backpacks and clothes so that the gear will cause the least amount of problems uh, over time. Another important piece of gear for ultra running is your GPS watch, which is a great navigation help, especially on a race like the one I did that were for long parts of the course was uh, unmarked. On this race it was even mandatory to have a GPS watch, but I just thought that the GPS watch I currently had would be fine and thought that the battery would last the whole race. But even though it was fully charged when starting, after 17 hours of running, the watch died, which could have been a major problem when it came to navigation uh, the last part of uh, the race. But this time I was very lucky to be close to an aid station where my wife was and I could borrow her GPS watch uh, and finish the race with uh, that one. And this brings me perfectly into the sponsor of this video, which is Corals. I've been using their Adventure GPS watch, the Vertex 2, for a while now. And it would have been so great to have had this watch when I did my ultra marathon. First of all, the battery life is just insane on this one. It has 140 hours of use when in GPS tracking mode. Besides this excellent battery life, this GPS watch has all the features you could wish for, both when it comes to running, other training activities and for bigger adventures. Another thing that really could have come in handy on my ultra marathon and that I look forward to using in the future is that this watch has integrated maps. That combined with this big screen and super reliable GPS really makes it a great navigation tool and you never have to worry about getting lost when you're out there running. If you're interested in this watch or some of Coral's other DPS uh, training watches, I can highly recommend them. And you can check them out on a link in the description under this video. So a huge thank you to Coros for making great watches for us runners to use and for supporting this channel. Many say that running an ultra is more of an eating competition than a running competition. And in some ways uh, that is true. Because if you take in a lot of calories through your whole run, it will help you a lot to keep your energy levels high all the way to the finish. And it isn't the most easy thing to take in a lot of calories while running. And many end up with stomach problems. And this is what happened to me. For some parts of the race, I could only walk and not run because of pain in my stomach. Just as with training specific for the race, you should also train on this aspect of running for long. If I would have done more really long runs in my preparation, I could also have gotten more time for my body to adapt to taking in a lot of calories while running and had the chance to test out different things like bars, sports drinks and gels to find out what suits me best. During my race I found that running in the mountains for that long is sort of an emotional roller coaster. When I was at my lowest after about 10 hours and had a lot of pain everywhere and just couldn't see how I could finish uh, this race. I for sure didn't think that I would get another high and all of a sudden get a lot of energy back. But I learned that these low moments will pass even if it takes some time. If you just focus on keep moving forwards, chances are pretty high that you soon will feel a lot uh, better. During my race I remember thinking so many times that if I manage to finish this thing I'm never doing something similar again. So have I stuck to this uh, thinking or will I be doing another extreme ultra marathon where I can put into practice uh, everything I learned from my first race? Well, they say that ultra runners have a bad memory and that's why they keep signing up for another one of these brutal events. And maybe that's true in a way that it's hard to remember 
how tired you were and how much pain you were in. But I also think that going through these extreme type of challenges and all the low points mentally and physically during a race is what brings you back to it. Running races for this long I for sure don't think is optimal in any way when it comes to your physical health. But I have over the last year felt that it has given me a lot on the mental side of things. And I feel that I have gotten so much out of this adventure afterwards. From running this race I learned that setting out on challenges uh, you are afraid of and that seem impossible to achieve and then actually achieving them can transform your thinking of what you are capable of and can boost you in so many other aspects uh, in life and help you fight through tough periods and achieve other goals you once thought were impossible. So I really recommend you to set some tough physical challenges and overcome them. It doesn't have to be an extreme mountain ultramarathon, it just has to be something that will challenge you and something you really want to achieve. So that's why I most probably will do another really long running race. I have nothing planned and with small babies at home it's not easy to find time for really long runs. So it will not be in the nearest future, but I have a dream to finish a 100 mile race. So if you want to see how that goes for me in the future and you enjoy my content, it's always appreciated if you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for watching, train smart, have fun and I will see you in the next video.